tonight. Uh, welcome to the Chancellor Robert R. Livingston Masonic Library of Grand Lodge. Uh, if you've never been here before, I'll introduce myself. My name is Catherine Walter, and I'm the curator for the 50,000 piece artifact collection of the Grand Lodge of New York. Uh, this is Morgan Aronson, our librarian, and she takes care of the 60,000 books that we have in the back. Uh, we're also very happy to have in attendance tonight two of our library trustees, uh, Ed Chiani and also uh, Jim Mellis in the back. So thank you all for coming. Uh, for our New York State uh, brethren who are here in attendance, I just want to put out a little reminder that we have a free reading course which is available to you through here. So please don't hesitate to sign up and start reading because we have amazing books. For our guests who are not Masons, we are a private library, but we are open to the public. So you are welcome to come here and read any of the books that we have in our collection. And tonight we are so pleased to introduce Armin Kulis. And he is our speaker for this, our third in our newly launched uh, monthly lecture series. Uh, Armin Kulis is an amazing sacred geometry artist and his aim is to awaken consciousness to the miracle and beauty of life. And doing this, he uses art, science, spirituality, and biomimicry, which is the imitation of the models, systems, and elements of architecture to solve complex human problems. He has a degree in architecture, summa cum laude, from the Universidad de Guino in La Paz, Bolivia and a master's degree in architecture on well mentioned from University, Universidad Nacional Autonomati Autonoma de Mexico. He studied painting, drawing, and engraving at the Real Academia San Carlos and has worked as a professor in undergraduate and postgraduate levels at the Universi Universidad La Salle. And last year, he was on an exhibit tour with his art that traveled throughout the United States. So we're very pleased and proud to have him here today. His art is inspired by nature, and we are inspired by his art. So please welcome with me our <laughs> Well, first of all, I want to thank God. Uh, thanks to the Grand Lodge of New York, the Livingstone Library, and I want to thank the Valley of Mexico Grand Lodge and my Anahuac 77 main house. Um, thank you, Catherine Walters. Thank you, Morgan Arison. Thank you, Alejandra Valdivia. Well, all my work is uh, related to art, science, and spirituality. And what I bring you here is mostly what I, I love the most and I want, you to, I want to share with you. Uh, I'm going to start with this image. It's an image of the universe. As, as, as human beings, we have discovered so many things through our technology, like microscopes and telescopes, so we can see as above, so below, in very highly precision. Uh, this image is from the Hubble telescope. And as you see, there are a lot of structures made from uh, stardust and all that. And from the far, we have like a uh, different shape. And here's an interesting image. This is like an eye, and it's very, very huge. And all of these images we can see through those uh, telescopes that are our finest eye in the, in, in the Earth. And here is the new telescope. This is James Webb. This is going to be able to see in the next uh, three or four years. Uh, this is not ready yet, but this is the form, and it's very interesting because of the hexagonal things that it has in, in the parts. And well, this is how we understand the universe. We are like um, very, very small compared to the whole entire place that we we know, but we don't know if there is more. But we are like really small. This is a, a graphic that can't explain <coughs> it. And this one, that's very interesting, uh, it's related to, and the first one, it's the universe. It's like cells. And down, it's the brain cells. So it's pretty much the same. And very 
good news about this one is the internet. And the internet is something that we just created very lately. And it's very much the same. So it's everywhere. Like the, the big shapes of the universes and the, the, the things that we have inside of our brains, it's the same. I, I'm very, very impressed on this one. Uh, we are nature, and as we know, there are a lot of things that are made that not by humans, but are there, and they're perfect. And th those are some samples. Uh, for, for example, this, like the eye and the cluster uh, universe things, and well, since all that, I want to share with you, with my heart. This information that I have learned and researched for a long time, it's my perspective and it's what I think and it's what I believe. This is how I started to get it into all this. Uh, this is my, my work <laughs> as a master architect and it's uh, organic architecture. So I have to do, first of all I have to understand what was the basic architecture uh, being inspired by nature. And this is the first one. Oh, it's pretty close, but let me explain it to you. First one, the Stonehenge has the has capacity to be related with the stars. And that's the very first uh, architectural formation that, that we, we as a humans build. And it's very interesting. Uh, because it's connected to the universe somehow. And lately, we have been um, involved in form. Form more than, uh, it's form more than functionality. And there is like the churches and the Art Nouveau, Art Deco, and all these um, things that are like just uh, almost, um, well, shapes that are not functional. But then Gaudi become like very important uh, because he he uses nature to develop architecture. He's the very first one who uses uh, who understands um, the nature and does a lot of amazing things with. Uh, with his knowledge, with the, with the nature power. And so that's where I get most of my inspiration in architecture. And, and it's a huge door that I open by understanding how Gaudi does his work. And here is uh, one quote he, he does. Those who look for the laws of nature as support for the new works collaborate with the creator. That's Anthony Gaudi, and that's what he does. He, this is this um, sacred family chapel in Barcelona, and as you can see, there are like like a lot of trees, and it's not trees, it's it's a it's a building itself, and it's amazing that he does these things, and he built it, and he created, but he uses all this information from nature. And there's a lot of other architects like this. Javier Zinosian right now is building these things in Mexico. And he uses these forms because those are forms that are in nature. And those are like not straight lines. And right now, there's a lot of more architects like um, Frank Perry, Osaha Hadid. They're doing this and, and using all the finest and latest innovation in technology and architecture. Um, after all, well, as an architect, I wanted to get more information uh, about nature, science, and all that. And then I get uh, this information that it's biomimicry. And biomimicry, it's all the technology that we can find in nature and use it for architecture or for any other technology. So architect, uh, nature has a lot of things and a lot of technology that we can use it. And I use this as an example. This is a butterfly. And if you can see, there is a lot of details in the, 
this is a microscope uh, photograph. And we're going to get into the, the wings. And there are like little dots there. And those are specials. Those are those dots. Those are shells. And that those has like special things. You can see the detail, but there is something more. And there's this shape. Those are the shells that the butterfly has on the wings. And that's the thing that's getting deeper. It, it doesn't end there. And you can see that piece is the way that it joins the, the butterfly uh, body to those uh, shells. And this is amazing. There's a lot of more details in there. And you get into, it will repeat. And then you get this other kind of a structure that is in the shell of the butterfly. And then you get this other detail that it's, there is more. And this is the way that the, that shell has that structure. And we haven't seen that never. And it's there, and it has been there for a long time. Nature uh, has developed uh, their technology for millions of years. And now we are understanding all this. And th that is how it works. And this is the structure that, that I'm talking about. And then there is this nanotechnology that's right now. That's, where, that's what we are living right now. And we are using particles, and we are building uh, structures, and machines, and uh, new materials made of this nanotechnology thing. And there's nanotubes, ca carbon nanotubes, they're like lighter materials that uh, can we can use for construction, use for medicine, and all these has a special shapes and forms. Look at those uh, hexagons. They're everywhere. And it's because uh, it has a special thing to work with. It's, it's perfect and it has a reason. Well, this is a new machine that can work and help the cell close and you can get cured by this nanotechnology, but this is what's happening right now. And also, this is the most important experiment that human beings are doing right now. This is the Large Hadron Collider. It's been like 25 years that it's around and we are having every year new uh, results for all the experiments. And that's how it looks. It's a huge machine, machine that's in Geneva and France and Sweden. And they're taking pictures of a hadron colliders. The, they're colliding hadrons. And it's a very small thing that are pushing it together and then will explode. And they will then realize that there are more particles than they used to think. And every year it's getting faster and you can get like more details about it. But that's how it works. One of the things that they have discovered, this is Gard Lisi. He's in a physics uh, uh, PhD. And he has this theory about Lie group E8. And those are particles that are in different dimensions. And this is what it looks. But also, look at those shapes. They're hexagons again. It's repeating. And he says that this is the main thing that works with all the universe. It's very, very small, but it re replicates and will create any shape by this. And that's what he's looking and he's searching and he's making up. But it's, it's nature, it's part of his investigation, and probably he's going to be the next Einstein. And he says, I think the universe is pure yeah. geometry. Basically, a beautiful shape twisting around and dancing over space time. That's very listen. And um, since I was talking about the hexagons, I want to let you know that there is there was another scientist called Masaru Emoto. Uh, he was from Japan, and he uh, did a lot of investigations 
as some of you know, the, he realizes that the power of mind and he discovers how you can affect uh, things in life and nature and everywhere by the power of the mind and the words. And that's very important because before that, we didn't know that we can affect things physically by, by saying things, by doing or uh, writing things. And what he is doing is investigating the power of words like bad or evil. It won't get that structure. If you say love, if you if you say please, if you if you vibrate in different uh, way, it will construct and this kind of things. And that's very interesting because nature works like that. And you can see the symmetry and the shapes and also the fractal things that are there. It's, it's very inspiring. And well, all this is about getting consciousness. Consciousness of what we're doing, of, of what we can do if we do, if we speak like in a certain ways, it will affect. And that's guaranteed. And that's science. And that's happening. And I, I guess we have to take care of the words that we use. So that's how it works. Um, this is a quote from him. To understand water is to understand the cosmos, marvels of nature and life itself. And now I'm going to talk about sacred geometry because I have been talking about those shapes, those hexagons, and I want to let you know exactly what that sacred geometry means. And I'm going to start with this symbol. This is the flower of life. Uh, that symbol has been with us with human beings for thousands of years. But that has an evolution. That also it's repeated um, on cells and lots of things in nature. And that's how it works. There's a, there's a dot, then there's a circle, there are two circles, and there's three, and then we'll multiplicate, and then you get the seed of life and the flower of life, and this is, that's the flower of life. It's um, Egyptians, the Chinese use them. Um, there's a lot of culture that use this symbol, and it's very powerful, and well, it's everywhere, and maybe they were they were connected or. But they discovered that, and they use it for many purposes. And that's how it looks. And inside of that, there are a lot of structures, too. And there's a lot of uh, symbols and, and shapes, and such as this one. This is the tree of life, the Kabbalah. And as many of you know, uh, it's, it's from Jewish. And they use it for a power purpose, and it's a powerful thing. And, and it has a lot of knowledge, and you can understand a lot of things from, from there. They're like sephiras, and you, when you understand one, you can grow to the next one, and into the next one. And upper to the top one, there is a very important one. And that one is a, a keter. Keter is Metatron's cube. And Metatron's cube is the, <coughs> is the most important one in, in, sorry, in the tree of life. And that's how it evolved as the Metatron's cube. The Metatron's cube has the five solid platonics. And it's a powerful symbol that involves this platonic solids. That information used to be very private and mostly uh, like in the 1500s uh, you weren't allowed to hear and to see all this because it was prohibited. And now that we are pretty much free of speaking, this is, this is it. 
there's like magic in this, but it's perfection. All these uh, forms, we're in nature and we're analyzing it and we're continuously learning about it. And that's how it works. This is the uh, tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, the dodecahedron, the icosahedron. And the powerful thing of this is that the faces repeat. And like this one is four, this one is eight, this one is six, this is 12, and uh, 20, and this is 12. But they're perfect. So you, you can see this is a powerful symbol because it has very, uh, a lot of dimensions inside of the very same one. And if you can, in meditation, you can use it for many things. And computers, and nanotechnology, and right now we can use it as a tool. And there are a lot of new uh, forms and structures and shapes that we can mix it and we can create it and as different as I go, like the butterfly, you can get very much information about this. And this is the Fisan symbol. It's the golden ray heel. Um, this is part of all the things that I'm talking about. And this is the code of God. And that's where it all begins. It's a uh, one plus one two, plus two, plus one three, plus two the the, the one before five, then three eight thirteen and it will repeat. And it, this code is everywhere in the universe, and also in us. It, it's like this. This repeats here progressively, and here plus this is this part, and the other, and all the body. And everything is made by this code. And so if you understand this, you will uh, be able to design, to, to build, and to create things that are related with nature. And they will be perfect. That's how it works. And it's in the universe, and it's in the microscope. You can see it everywhere. And also, this knowledge has been with us, with human beings, for a long time. And well, this is it. This is how it works. The universe and us, we are one. We have the same structure. It's, it's the same shape, and it's repeating everywhere. I use this a lot because it makes me free. It makes me free to, to do like, uh, well, my, my, <coughs> my drawings, my engravings, and also the photography, I try to capture with, with this, with this proportion. And I don't know, but there is something that you will get into and you will feel like free or um, you will feel like it's part of you. And you can understand that in a very intense uh, <coughs> sense. So. That's what it is. That's what I'm trying to bring it out to you. Um, it's consciousness. Consciousness of those things that we don't see often. That we, that some scientists do as use their microscopes or the telescopes. But that's my perspective that that's the thing that I want to share with you. And, and let you free. And this is something that I'm doing. And I'm trying to use all those symbols like phi, on, the egg, the triangle, the metatron's cube, and there's a lot of, of these elements that Sumerians used to, used to do, and you know alchemy, and the, the, the art that I'm proposing has a lot of, the, of, of these elements, and well, thank you. Thank you for your time, and thank you very much.